Ballers, what the fuck is up? Um, the playoffs start tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the East for you. Corey's going to cover the West. I will give my series predictions at the end for the West, but Corey's going to cover in depth. I'm going to cover the East in depth. So let's go ahead and get started. We're uh, Wizards at 76ers, one and eight. Setting that impressive lopsided play-in win from the Wizards beating the Pacers. We're setting that aside because the 76ers are 3-0 and this year against the Wizards in the regular season, and we all know the players to watch. Uh, Russell Westbrook, who's averaging a 20-point trip dub. Bradley Beal, who's in second for scoring 31 a game behind Steph Curry. And on the other side, we got the big three, starting with Joel Embiid, 28 and 10 rebounds. Tobias Ayers adding 20 with himself. And Simmons, 15.7 rebounds, seven assists. But the Philly defense will be the winning factor for this in the 76ers, who are only allowing 109 points per game, where the Wizards defense is allowing 120, which is the worst in the league. So I think it's going to come down to Simmons and Danny Green defending the guard play from the Wiz. And on the opposite end, it's a question. It's not really a question because it's not going to happen. Daniel Gafford and Alex Len are going to be the are the, going to be the ones trying to slow down Joel Embiid in the paint, and it's not going to happen. So therefore, I'm taking the 76ers for one. Um, I think the Wizards will have one game where the guards can't really be contained, but that's one game out of four. Won't get it done. The whole series will feature the argument that Joel Embiid is hands down, hands down the best big man in the league, unstoppable. 76ers, 4-1, they move on. Next up, we got four and five, Hawks at Knicks. Again, a series where one team was just better in the regular season series, where the Knicks going 3-0 and against the Hawks, my man Jay Ran had 40 points in two of those matchups in a near trip dub in the most recent win against them. The Knicks just seem to have the Hawks number, but does that matter in a four game playoff series? We're about to find out. And the Knicks only allow 105 points per game. That's the best in the league, but the offense obviously has still some explosion to be desired where the Hawks have a top 10, 15 offense and defense, which shows a little bit more consistency. And this is my dilemma in the whole thing. The Hawks have a better starting squad, obviously. You got Trey Young, Bogdanovich, um, Lemon Pepper Lou coming on the bench on the bench, Clint Capella, DeAndre Hunter. They're a good squad starting wise, and I love the makeup of this squad last year. And I think they've only got better. I just think the rhythm isn't there like they had last year. They only started to show it toward the end of the season. Uh, like I said, Nick have I mean. Atlanta has a better starting lineup. Knicks are clearly deeper, especially in the guard department. And my thought process in a four-game series is that defense will prevail as long as the team uh, – they, they feel each other out in every series they do. LeBron mentions it all the time. Game one is always a feel-out game for LeBron. But um, you got four games. You got four losses, I should say, up to seven games. So in this matchup, clearly there isn't a player on the Hawks team that can slow down J-Ran. And I see the Knicks taking the first two games at home. Then when it goes back to Atlanta, that's when I think Atlanta's going to start picking up some of their, uh, their rhythm. The Hawks start to clamp down, and the whole team just starts to vibe, vibe together. Maybe Clint Capella and start to slow J-Ran down, because you can't stop him. You can only attempt to slow. Uh, and the main question is if the Hawks' role players need to be guarded, if they need to be guarded, then Trey Young's going to have a field day open all day. But I imagine they're going to lock up Trey Young first. First priority, Trey Young, and that's going to make it rely on Atlanta's role players to hit their shots and just do better in their one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, like I said, let's go back to it. Hawks have a better starting lineup. Knicks have a better bench. And that's why I'm taking the Knicks. The Knicks just have a better, a better team in a whole because of their bench is so stacked. I think so. Um, you got Derrick Rose and Emmanuel Quickly right there. That's an amazing guard combo right off the bench. You got a nitty gritty Taj Gibson who's ready to get 
ready to flood with anybody in the paint, including Clint Capella. You got Alec Burks, who's done a phenomenal job coming off the bench. And obviously, you can't forget to mention that there ain't no stopping Obi Toppin. And I don't think he's going to play too much, honestly, because in playoffs, obviously, all the the time gets reduced. Your starting squad is out there longer. Your, your matchups just last longer. The team doesn't like to go that deep into the bench. And when you go that deep, I honestly don't think Kevin Knox is going to be playing too much either. But that's how deep this squad is, is that they can bury Kevin Knox and Obi Toppin in case of a matchup where they need to throw somebody else with a bigger size or somebody who's a little faster than somebody else in there. And I think that's going to do them good. I think the Knicks... I think the Knicks come out on top. I think it's going to be a seven-game series. I think Knicks win 4-3. But I ultimately think it's going to decide on the Hawks role players, like I said, hitting those shots and winning their matchups while Trey Young's getting clamped down. Next up, we got the Heat, number six, at the Bucks, number three. And this one is a great one. I know I'm going to surprise a lot of people with my pick here. Where the Bucks lead the regular season series 2-1. But when you look at it in all three games, Giannis played and balled every one of them. And Butler didn't touch the court for any of them. So the stats are a little skewed. The wins and losses are a little skewed because we all know he hasn't been healthy, healthy with a full squad until like the last month of the season. Uh, Giannis getting 28 points, 11 rebounds on the season, and a second man in charge, Middleton adding 20 points to that. With the Bucks putting up 120 points a game, that is the best in the league. The Heat will try to hold them to their average points allowed, which is 107, floating around fifth in the league. Butler is putting up 21, 7, and 7, and the big man, Bam, 19 and 9. The thing that has me concerned right now in this is really the lack of confidence in the Greek freak. I'm not going to quote him word for word because I don't know what it is word for word, but along the lines he said the outcome of this year in the playoffs could be the outcome it was last year where it was disappointing and early exit, or it could be different. That's all he said. He was, he was vague, and that's not what you want to see from your star on a max contract. You want, to, you want to see your star say something like LeBron said. LeBron was sitting on the bench and said when he comes back, they're going to drop another banner. And he wasn't even playing that night. So I want to see the Greek freak do that same damn thing. And I think them getting beat by the Heat in a 4-2 series, I'm calling it now, is just going to be another notch in the, pe- notch in the wall for as to why Giannis will ultimately lead this team. Another early exit this year. Uh, I choose the Heat because they, they're going to do the same thing they did last year. They're coming in under the radar. I love what they did last year. Like, like we all, Nobody expected them to get to the playoffs and make noise. But they got to the playoffs. They made noise. They won the East. They went to the championship. And I think they would have had an argument at the championship if not for them getting injured. Goran Dragic and Bam Adebayo, that's – two pieces of three legs on that team honestly and I thought it would I think the Lakers still would have won that year but it would have been a hell of a better fight so I think the Heat are going to surprise again and I think the Bucks are going to disappoint again so maybe my pick isn't surprising Heat win 4-2 moving on number two seed Nets go up against the Boston Celtics number seven seed Nets own all the wins in this regular season series, 3-0. But in all three matchups, they never had a fully healthy squad coming from the Nets. They always had one or two stars sitting out, and they've been doing that all year, just trading out who sits. Um, in only one game again in those matchups, Jalen Brown did not play. So needless to say, with or without Jalen Brown, the Nets are just a better team. And since missing Brown, the Celtics are under 500 and look absolutely garbage, if we're being honest. I know Tatum put the world on notice with his 50-burger against the Wizards in a playing team, but the Wizards also have the worst defense in the league. Are you kidding me? Like, come on. And where was Tatum those other eight games without Brown? They only won three of those games, including the play-in to Washington Wizards, and all those wins were against teams under 500. 
I sound like a Celtic hater. I know all the people who know me say I am because I'm a Cavs fan. But I will admit when teams are good, I don't like the Nets, but they're good. I'm not a Celtic hater. I just don't like what they're doing lately. It was impressive what Tatum did. But it was also, you squint your eyes, and you could see why. The Wizards have a terrible freaking defense. And Nets obviously have the big three uh, looking unstoppable right now when they are fully healthy. Granted, they've only had about eight or nine games where they actually played all together in the same team. But the big three have a combined 79 points, 20 rebounds, and 23 assists. And on a game uh, on the Celtic side, you just got Tate, Jason Tatum, 26-7, and Kemba Walker adding 20 points, five assists. In this matchup, you'll obviously get the scrappy defensive play from Marcus Smart. But Marcus Smart can't guard Kyrie and Harden and KD when the tough gets tough. God, I, I'm mumbling through this right now because I'm so heated. I said this enough. I rehearsed it. Um, no, but in this matchup, I do think the Nets are going to win. Obviously, I think it's going to be a sweep for O. But I do think this is one of the more interesting matchups that it's going to be fun to watch. I mean, you think of the one-on-one -on -one matchups. You got Kemba versus Harden. Marcus Smart versus Kyrie. Tatum versus Katie. And then you got an underrated matchup in double T at Blake Griffin. Or DeAndre Jordan, who you ever want to throw in there. I know both of these coaches, Steve Nash, isn't going to let it stand. They're going to swap something up. They're going to come with some, I don't want to say trickery, because it's not trickery when you're a coach. It's just coaching. And then, obviously, Brad Stevens is a genius. He's going to do what he's going to do. But ultimately, this one-on-one -on -one matchups look amazing. I just don't think the Celtics, as a team, have a chance. Nets 4-0. Okay, that's the East. We'll expand on that more in maybe a week when the second round starts creeping up. I know I'll have more videos here and there sprinkled out about individual games and giving my looks and giving what I've seen the previous nights when these games actually start playing. But on the West side, we got Jazz at Memphis, where Memphis just locked up their eight seed again in an impressive win against the Warriors. I know it was the play-in. Went to overtime. John Morant being clutched down the stretch. And that's the only reason I'm giving Memphis one game. It's going to be 4-1. Jazz win. Jazz moving on. Memphis gets one, one game where they're just unstoppably hot. Um, next up, we got 4-5. and five, Clippers at Mavs. A lot of people, a lot of speculation are saying the Mavs lost the last couple games and sat their starters more than necessary to duck having to go up to the three seed and potentially play the Lakers in the second round. I don't think that's the case. I think they just wanted rest. And, and ultimately, even if it was the case, it's called strategy. I'd rather much, I'd much rather face the Mavericks than the Blazers or Nuggets. And then in the second round, looking at it, I'd much rather face the Jazz than the Lakers. But that's just my opinion. I think the Clippers win 4-2, though. You got to give my boy Luca at least two wins. Next up, we got Denver at the Portland Trailblazers, three and six. Um, this one's going to be a, a great matchup as well. Very good individual matchups. We're going to see, uh, can someone from Denver stop Dane? Or can a big in Portland, Nurkic, stop the Joker? Very interesting. I kind of envy Corey because he gets to cover this going to depth. I know I'm going to be thinking about it and turning, but I won't release any videos with it. Ultimately, I think Denver wins 4-2. Uh, Dame, Dame and CJ just fall short. They caught the bad end. And I think if Portland went up against Clippers, they would have fared better. But ultimately, Denver's just a better team, even without Jamal Murray. Next up, we got the Suns at Lakers. I think this one's interesting just because LeBron and Chris Paul get to go against each other and I'm ready to see. I know they have such a good friendship, but these are also two insanely, insanely, insanely competitive veterans, both on year 17, both 
just playing out of their mind right now. LeBron is LeBron. The King does what he does. But CP3 is playing lights out. Probably one of the greatest years I've seen him play outside of the golden Lob City in Hornet days. So I'm taking Los Angeles Lakers here. I think it's only going to be 4-1. I don't think it's going to be as interesting as everyone thinks. I know they have their big three, DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker, and CP3, but I just don't think they can overcome this Lakers' amazing defense and the will of the king in the brow, man. All right. These are my first round wins. Uh, East and West, I know I went into depth with the East. Be sure to look for Corey. Be sure to look for Corey's video that comes out with the West. Um, I know I'll be watching it. I'm already interested. I'm ready to see what he his takes are, and I'm ready to see how he thinks the East's gonna shake up as well. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Follow all the social media. All the links are gonna be in the description. Um, this was your boy Cody on a predictions. We got many more to come. The playoffs are here. I'm excited. I'm amped up. It's freaking four in the morning. I got to wake up in a couple hours to go to work, but I'm here making a video for you guys. This is what we do for fun. We're ballers on a budget. Peace.